In this question, we will investigate different types of sequences. Here we have a real-world problem about automobile leases. Lease agreement often contains clauses that contain the number of kilometers driven per year by charging a per kilometer fee over that limit. For the car shown below, the lease requires that the number of kilometers driven each year must be no more than 15,000. So now the first one is not about this details. They have told about 15,000 kilometers to be drawn each year. So now that means if it's the first year, it's 15,000. I'll just write it as K. Next will be 30K. Then we will have 45K and we will have so on. That's the sequence. But here they have told something else. First part, write the sequence describing the maximum number of allowed kilometers on the car at the end of 12 years, uh, 12 months, sorry of the lease if the car has 1,350 kilometers at the beginning of the lease. So yes, we have to add, keep on adding 15,000, but they have already told it has 1,350. Basically just add 1.35K everywhere over year, then you'll get it. But let's do exactly how to do it. Say year one, that is A1, first year. So we know it already has 1,350 kilometers, right? You need to add how much is the limit in the first year? 15,000. So that will be the answer. It will be 16,350. Same thing here. Second one. Now here we have done. Second one will be A1 plus 15,000. See, this is recurring. So it will be A1 plus 15,000. That is basically how much? A second term will be A1. That is 16,350 plus 15,000. So here we have 31,350. Basically, it's 30,000 plus 1350. Same thing. What about the third term? Because we have to write it for three years, right? Maximum number allowed. Okay, we, we'll just write three years and we can put dot, dot, dot. Or we can go ahead. So 40, uh, it'll be 31,350 plus 15,000 again. It's 15,000. That'll be, say, it's 45,000 plus 150, so it's 46,350. That is the maximum kilometers in three years. So here we go. And these are the three terms. You can, if they ask you for more number of years, just keep on adding 15,000 to the previous term because 15,000 is the maximum limit in one year. So the next part over here is write the first four terms of the sequence that gives the cumulative cost of the lease for a given month. See your first four terms in the sense first four months we need to write. What is the down payment? 1699 is down payment. So the first term will be no matter what you are to pay the down payment. And then what is every month you need to pay? That is 399. So imagine you go and buy a house. So the bank will help you to buy a house, but you need to pay a down payment. That's like a lump sum of money. So you say 50% of it, you ought to pay. Then every month you can pay the remaining. So this is down payment, no matter what, it has to be done before itself. This is the recurring cost. Every month you need to pay 399. So yeah, that's, that would be the answer. Now next term would be, whatever is the first term, you add 399. Whatever is the first term, add 399. That would be it. So here you can just use the calculator and you can find all the four terms. We can do 1699 plus 399. That is 2098. If you have to find many other terms, what you can do is in this calculator, just press uh, answer. And now press plus 399. For the next term, I'll just press equal to. What happens is, this is the second term. It is 2,497. Now, what about A3? That is the previous term, A2 plus 399, isn't it? And I have to do one more month. That is A4, that is A3 plus 399. So, I, I have put over your answer so that the previous value, whichever I get, will be stored here. Now, second month is done. When I press equal to, I get the third month. Because automatically this answer value changes. So now it is 2896. If you're getting much confused, you can, of course, put this plus 399. Put the answer plus 399. That's absolutely fine. But now this is an easier way if there are many values to be found out. So the last one will be 3295. So these are the four terms. That is first four months, basically.
So here you go. That will be the answers. Now we will move on to the next part. That is write an explicit formula to represent the sequence in the part B. Let's go to the part B. You need to write a formula. Now if I want to find the fourth month instead of adding, you know, for the previous terms, can I directly jump here? Yes, of course. How we can do is, say for example, a n, that is nth term, you need to add 1, 6, 9, 9, no matter for what, which, uh, which term, that is the standard money, right? That is the thing. Plus, every month it is 399. So this mat is depending on the month. If I want the 10th month, then I need to multiply this by 10 because 10 times 399 plus 1699. So this is the condition. So that is the recursive formula. Sorry, this is the explicit formula. They want a formula directly to find it, right? That should be the answer. So you will have 169, uh, 1699, which is a lump sum amount, plus what is recurring? 399. This recurs every n. Now I wrote over here 10, my bad. It should be n. Depends on what month it is given. If it is 5, it will be 5. So this is the correct formula, 1699 plus 399. Over here it is the number of months, n. And the last part here, determine the total amount of money paid by the end of the lease. How much will be paid at the end? See, it is maximum up to 36 months, isn't it? So I'll use the same one over here. All you need to do is multiply it by 36. This is it. You put it in the calculator, you get it. So now the initial down payment plus every month recurring, maximum you can go is 36 months. And if you put in the calculator, that is the total amount. So let's type this out, 1699 plus 399 times, it's not one month or two months, it's 36 months, type in properly, it should be 16,063, so that's the final answer. Let's look into the next problem here, fourth term, we need to find the specified term, that's the fourth term we need to find, if the first term is given as phi, and look at this, it's a recursive formula, that means you can't jump to the fourth term without knowing the previous terms. It's not explicit. Explicit means if you want fourth term, you directly put n as four, you'll get it. But there's no n here. So now how can we find the next term? You can't directly jump to fourth term. You need to find a1, that's phi. What about a2? a2 will be, see even though it's writing exam, just start finding the terms that's more than enough. a2 will be here, Instead of n, I put 2 because this is for n is greater than or equal to 2. So I can use that formula. Minus 3, a, 2, minus 1, plus 10. Now what happens? a, 2 will be equal to, this is going to be 2 minus 1. That's the previous term, a, 1, plus 10. Now all you need to do is, you know, you can do it in the calculator. Minus 3 times 5, plus 10. That's minus 15 plus 10. That is minus 5. Now, how do we find A3? A3 will be using this term. So now I'm not going to write all these steps. We can directly write A3 as n and then minus 3, A n minus 1, 3 minus 1 will be 2 plus 10. And here we have minus 3 times minus 5 plus 10. That will be equal to minus, uh, minus will be positive 15 plus 10. It's 25. And lastly, it is A4. That is what we are solving for minus 3 a3 plus 10 and here we have minus 3 times 25 plus 10 that is going to be 75 negative then plus 10 will be minus 65 so that is the term which we wanted that is the fourth term so that's how we solve it up that's minus 65 again same thing but now it's the seventh term that means we have to do plenty of iterations so what happens here a2 is going to be 0 0.5 times A1 plus 3. So here it's going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. A1 is 14 plus 3, that is going to be 7 plus 3, it's 10. That's A2. A1 is already given here. A3, that's 0 0.5 times. You can directly substitute, but I'm going to write the formula first. A2 plus 3. So that is going to be 0 0.5 times 10 plus 3. That is going to be 5 plus 3. That's 8. What about the next one? Again, it's half of a the previous term, a3 plus 3. And here we have 0 0.5 times 8 plus 3. 
and we have 4 plus 3 that is 7. It's 4 plus 3 that's 7. See now it's it's a recursive formula. You can't think of it like a sequence. It's two difference. Now it's one difference. The difference changes. So therefore this is not a direct problem. You, you need to know the formula otherwise you can't go ahead. So for A5 it is 0.5A4 plus 3. So that is going to be 0 0.5 into you, you have the previous term that is 7 plus 3 that is 3.5 plus 3 it's 6.5 and a6 that is 0 0.5 times a5 plus 3 so that is equal to 0 0.5 times a5 is going to be the previous one 6.5 plus 3 that's half of this is 3.25 and 6.25 and lastly a7 that is going to be half of the previous term that's a6 plus 3 and here we have 0 0.5 of 6.25 plus 3 so this is going to be 3.125 and it'll be 6.125 half of that and you can see the pattern next one will be 0 uh, 6.08 um, 0875 and so on but anyways, we have to stop at 7th term. That will be the 7th term here. But please use calculators in your exam and easily find the correct answers. So here we go. These are answers 14, 10, 8, 7, 6.5, 6.25 and lastly 6.125. That's what we got. Now we have to find the 4th term. Now same thing again. It's a recurs recursive formula itself. It's a recursive formula in the sense you can directly jump to 4th term. You need to find all the previous terms. So a1 is 0, a2 is going to be 3 times 3 to the power a1. That's it. Now here a2 is equal to 3 times 0, that's 1. Now what about the next one? a3 is going to be 3 times a power 2 and a3 is 3 times 1, that is 3. Fourth power, uh, I mean fourth term. 3 times a to the power 3 a3 a3 was option uh, power uh, it's number 3 so we put it in over here that's going to be 3 times 3 9 27 is the answer so that is the final answer here we go very simple problems and here then it's a huge formula right again it's a recursive itself why because see this is n minus 1 n minus 1 it's just that this the previous term is used twice now let's solve it up a2 will be equal to over here a1 square minus 5 times a1. Then, okay, okay, again, that is plus 4. It's a big one. So a2 will be equal to, it's going to be 3 square minus 5 times 3 plus 4. And the answer is going to be, you can just put in the calculator because, you know, you'll, you'll save a lot of time. And a3, what is going to be? It's going to be a2 square minus 5 times a2 plus 4 and over here whatever the previous answer in the calculator we need to just put it over there so this is 3 square that's 9 minus 15 that's 5 times 3 plus 4 and it's minus 2 and here it'll be minus 2 the whole squared minus 5 times 2 plus 4 so it'll be 4 8 and again, it will be minus 2. Okay, this is C. It's going to be 18. Please remember the signs properly. If I miss this minus sign, then the answer would have been completely different. So when you're doing in calculator, please make sure you put the signs properly. Minus 5 times minus 2 plus 4. And there we go. The answer is 18. They have just told A3. And that's the answer. That is the end of this question. I hope it is clear. If you have any doubts, please consider re-watching the video or posting your doubts in the comments. I hope you all will head on to the next video.